Adinkra symbols are amongst the most revered symbols in West Africa. The symbols are believed to have its origin from Jaman, a former Akan kingdom in present-day Ivory Coast. According to Akan oral tradition, in the 19th century, there was conflict between Nana Kofi Adinkra and the Asantehene Nana Osei Bonsupeni because the latter tried to duplicate the golden stool of German land. This is an account by Thomas Bowditch, who visited the Gold Coast and Ivory Coast in 1817, 1818, 1819, 1820, and 1821 and saw both golden stools of the German and the Asantes. Thomas Bowditch was born in Bristol in 1791 and served as a writer for the African Company of Merchants, a British trading company that was active along the Gold Coast of West Africa, which is now Ghana, between 1752 and 1821. The company had replaced the Royal African Company and was responsible for continuing British involvement in the transatlantic enslavement of Africans until its abolition in 1807. After abolition, the company concerned itself with missions to the kingdoms and the interior of the region. In 1817, Bowditch was commissioned to join a mission to Kumasi, the capital of the Asante Empire. The principal aim was to guarantee company control over the Gold Coast, which the mission achieved. While traveling through the Asante Empire, Bowditch made several significant observations on Asante culture that are of great use to historians of pre-colonial West Africa. He also collected several pieces of Asante craftsmanship that he presented to the British Museum on his return to London in 1818. According to Bowditch, the German stool was greater in splendor and value and in every way superior to that of the Asante king. According to him, the Asante stool was carved out of common wood of the country and encased in golden plates. The German stool had a far greater meaning and significance than the Asante stool. This was the reason why the Asante was jealous of German land. The golden stool of Asante man since the 17th century has been the symbol of power and the soul of Asantes. It is believed to have been conjured from the sky by Okumfu Anoche while landing on the feet of the very first Asante Hene, Nana Osei Tutu I. The golden stool, which is referred to as the Sike Jakufi, remains the most prized possession of the Asantes. At the main encounter of the war between the Germans and Asantes, the German troops led by Nana Kofi Edinkra killed many of the Asante forces led by Nana Osei Bunsupeni. They fought severally. When Asante realized they were unable to defeat German, they offered a bribe to the German troops to accept defeat, but German troops refused the bribe. These troops, led by Suma Ami, renamed the sport as Menje, meaning I refuse to accept the bribe. Later on, King of Bantama, who was known as Bantama Hene, Amankwetia, with Jabin, Kukufu, and Bosome adopted new strategy with reinforcement from other sources, and these troops were able to cross the river Tain. When German King Edinkra realized that the state would be defeated, he asked his wife and his council of elders to hide their stool regalia and then committed suicide. When Nana Edinkra's son, Apil, was captured and taken to Kumasi, he was tortured to show the whereabouts of his father. Out of pain, Apil directed the Asante troops to a heap of dead bodies. The fate of German Hene Nanakufi Edinkra was not certain. He was never captured and his whereabouts has never been known. According to Wakan oral history, the Asantes discovered the Edinkra cloth after their battle with the German. And it was with this cloth that had numerous Edinkra symbols. Some of the symbols were described as patterned and interpreted as a way of expressing sorrow. Since then, both Asantes and Germans took to painting and printing traditional symbols onto cloth. Adinkra means farewell or goodbye in Chi, a language widely spoken by the Akans of West Africa. It has therefore become the tradition of Akans and other tribes to wear cloths decorated with Adinkra symbols on important occasions such as festive seasons, naming ceremonies, funerals, and marriage ceremonies. 
the symbols have assumed global importance and are now found in logos, clothes, furniture, sculpture, earthenware pots, amongst many others. There are over 100 Edinkra symbols, but we'll take a quick look at 10 of them. Edra is a watery shrub, specifically hyssop. It is a symbol of purity, sanctity, chastity, good fortune, consecration, and cleanliness. David, the anointed king of Israel, says in Psalm 51, verse 7, Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. The Abidya is palm tree. The palm tree symbolizes wealth, self-sufficiency, toughness, and vitality. In West Africa, the palm tree is seen as a magic tree that has extreme beneficial purposes. Out of the palm tree, we get medicine, food, shelter, oxygen, booms, and candle, amongst many others. Asasi Yudru means the earth has weight. It symbolizes the divinity, the power, and authority of the earth. Akans believe that all power emanates from the earth, hence we must take care of the earth if we want to be taken care of. Epa means handcuffs. The two interlocking chains is the symbol for slavery, equality, law, and justice. Metal chain handcuffs were introduced in West Africa via the transatlantic enslavement of Africans. Conversely, it is a symbol that rejects any form of slavery and colonialism. Fahudie means freedom, independence, and emancipation in West Africa. I can't believe that freedom or independence comes with its own responsibilities. Jinyame is an Akan expression that means only God or except God. Jinyame is arguably the most popular Edinkra symbol. It expresses the deep faith Akans have in the Supreme Being, called by many names and titles, including Unyame, Nyame, Unyankupon and many others. Sankofa means go back and get it, learning from the past. It symbolizes wisdom and using past experiences to build and aid the future. I can't believe it is not a taboo to go back and get anything you forgot. Sankofa is an admonition against arrogance. We see the mythical bird reaching to its back to pick its egg. This symbol may resonate with a lot of people of African descent who are abroad to look deeper within themselves and not shy away from returning home. And Stroma is the Akan word for star, literally translates to the child of the heavens. It is a symbol of faith and the belief in patronage and dependency on the supreme being. And Stroma is a reminder that God is the father and watches over all people. The Ghana national men's football team is known as the Black Stars of Ghana. The Aya means fan. And it's a symbol of endurance, independence, perseverance, and deviance against difficulties. This is because ferns are hardy plants that can grow in highly unusual places. They need little water to thrive and can withstand the toughest of climates. Due to this, the symbol is also associated with durability. I am sure Tupac was referring to the Aya any time he mentioned a rose that grew from concrete. Numerous people wear the Aya symbol as a tattoo that suggests that they have endured many difficulties in life and have faced various obstacles which they have overcome. She won't she means bend, you won't bend, or that which doesn't bend. This is a symbol of toughness, permanence, and endurance. This symbol gets its meaning from traditional priests that were able to walk on fire without burning their feet and inspiration to others to endure and overcome difficulties. It is also a reminder to people that they are capable of persevering through challenging times and becoming more resilient than before. Adinkra symbols are used to tell stories and are similar to hieroglyphics. Each symbol has a deep, often abstract meaning behind it. The above list only hints at the many Adinkra symbols and their related proverbs, lessons, and meanings.